Hey there, hope you're going well. I'm Jade the Beamer and 2020 has come to an end. Everyone just breathe a sigh of relief. <laughs> I feel like this year has been especially chaotic, not only in terms of the world, but just personally. However, despite all of this mayhem, I do believe that we should look for the positives. In honor of the year I first started my YouTube channel, I just wanted to do a bit of a wrap up and share with you the favorite things of this year. I'm gonna be talking about my favorite books, TV shows, movies, songs, getting into everything here. Without further ado, let's get into it! Starting off with books, this year I read 38 books, which is more than last year, which was honestly just my goal. I added four new books to my favourites list, so I'm going to share those with you now. My first new favourite, which ended up in my favourite books of all time video, I'll link that in the description below if you want to check that one out, is Thunderhead. So this was one of my first reads in this year, and it just blew me away. This is probably my favourite dystopian book ever. I just had such a good experience reading it and theorizing and I was so pumped throughout all of it And this also has a sentimental attachment because the book beam I filmed of this link in the description below Was my first ever book beam that I put on my channel. So overall I just really liked it In case you don't know this is the second book in the Ark of a Scythe trilogy huge dystopian saga It's about a world where humans have progressed to the point where where we don't die and there are these people called scythes who have to kill people selectively in order to control the population. Very interesting. If you've read Scythe, I'd really recommend you continuing on with Thunderhead. It's excellent. My next new favourite book of this year was Again But Better by Christine Riccio. So I believe this came out last year, but I just didn't get around to it till this year. I had fun reading it, but while I was doing so, I did have mixed feelings as well about where the plot was going and my thoughts overall. After I had finished the book and sat down for a bit, it just like really dawned on me how much I enjoyed this book and how much it had changed my perspective, especially on contemporaries. So yeah, I just found it pleasantly surprising and different and I really enjoyed it. This is a beautiful book. It's written by fellow booktuber Christine Riccio or Pollen Bananas 20, French Watermelon 19. Essentially it just follows an American girl who was studying medicine. She takes a semester abroad in London and it really just brings about life changes and she really really discovers who she wants to be, what she wants to do, and who she wants to be with. Check this one out if you can. My next new favourite was to be expected and that is Wayward Sun by Rainbow Rowell. So I read this one more recently while I was on vacation and it was the perfect holiday book. It's about two characters going on holiday in America and it was just what I needed. So this is the sequel to Rainbow Rowell's fantasy book Carry On. That's one of my favourite books of all time. It's in my favourite books of all time video and I really loved Carry On and I really enjoyed reading Wayward Son. I think I enjoyed Carry On more because it was like the original book and I just love it so much but I really appreciated this as a sequel. I loved the world building and the characters and where the plot was going, the romance. I just really enjoyed it so book beam on this one coming in the near future I promise. And my last new favourite book of 2020 was Of Poseidon by Anna Banks. So I don't know why but in the past year or so I've gotten really obsessed with like mermaids and stuff and this book just felt like a breath of fresh air, as ironic as that is. I just really ended up enjoying reading it and talking about it and I just love it so much. Again a book beam is gonna come out on this one very soon. It's basically about this girl who finds out that she has hidden heritage and powers and the water and that she's part of this underwater race called the Serena and it's about these people that are trying to like recruit her and get her to understand who she actually is. There's all of this mystery, there's romance, there's friendship. It's just great overall. I'd go into it not knowing too much about it. That's how I did it and I, it was the best experience. Check this one out if you can. I read a few poetry anthologies this year and my favourite one of those was Masquerade by Cyrus Parker. So this is a poetry 
poetry anthology, which kind of follows themes of like gender dysphoria and self-discovery, and it's by a non-binary poet called Cyrus Parker. Very cool, it reached out to me on Instagram, which is amazing, and overall I just had a really great time reading this one. I filmed a bard beam of this, which will again go up very soon, I'm running a bit behind in the chaos that is 2020, but it will get up eventually. Gorgeous illustrations in here, great poetry, but I would really recommend you check this one out if you're into poetry. It's my favourite one of 2020. I did have a great time rereading some old favourites as well, including Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. I made a book beam about that one, and it's my favourite book in the Harry Potter series, so I had such a fun time cosplaying as my Ravenclaw self. I also reread Twilight and I really enjoyed that. I made a full book beam review on Twilight and why I think it's a great book. I'll leave a link to that in the description below as well. I was also lucky enough to have the chance to read some great non-fiction as well. I picked up Dear Ejuele or A Feminist Manifesto in 15 Suggestions by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. She is one of my heroes now, one of my role models. I love her TED talk, We Should All Be Feminists. And this this was just such a short and life-changing book. I made a full book beam about that <laughs> and why it was so amazing. Basically it's just about how to be a better feminist in our modern world and how to raise your kids as feminists. I'd really recommend checking this one out. It changed my perspective and I know it's going to be a great help every day. I also read an autobiography which I really enjoyed and it has become my favourite autobiography and that is Binge by Tyler Oakley. So Tyler is one of my favourite YouTubers and this book was just like a summary of him. I've got a book beam coming out on this one very soon, I promise, but I just really enjoyed it. He's so sassy, the writing was really good, the stories were funny and relatable, and overall I just had a great time reading about his life. I read some short story collections, I read Kindred or Twelve Queer Stories, hashtag love OzYA. That was really great, really important important. I made a full book beam review of that collection. Please check it out if you're interested. But I'd say my favourite short story collection of the year was Coil and Trouble, 15 Tales of Women and Witchcraft. It's such a beautiful book. There are so many cool and diverse stories in here, different types of romances and portrayals of women. And overall, it's just really empowering and magical. And I'd really recommend you check it out if you get the chance. So I didn't read any graphic novels this year which is interesting. I, I don't really own many um, but I did get into some manga. I read Sailor Moon which I ended up enjoying. Gave me those magical girl vibes. But my favourite manga of the year was probably Tokyo Mew Mew. I thought it was just really like light-hearted and funny and cute and it was just what I needed at the time as well. I can make a review of that one if you'd like. Please let me know in the comments below. It's a lot of fun. It's about these girls who have the DNA of endangered animals and they're basically just trying to save the world in this animal squad. Very cool. I will be getting into my favourite two books of this year very soon. But before that, I have a couple of categories that need to be filled. So the most entertaining book that I read in 2020 was Moving Pictures by Terry Pratchett. So this is a Discworld book. Discworld is this huge fantasy series by Terry Pratchett. And this is a standalone in that world, so you can read it without any other knowledge. And it's basically a parody of the creation of film. I made a full book beam review on it. Please check that out if you're interested. I just had so much fun reading it. It's so funny and interesting and I had a great time talking about it, so very entertaining. This next category I couldn't choose between three and it is the most surprising books of 2020. Not surprising in a, oh, that was bad sort of way, but a good surprise. The first one of those is Angels and Demons by Dan Brown. I made a full book beam review and I read the rest of the series as well. Angels and Demons was surprising because I didn't expect to get as hooked into the mystery as I did. And so on the edge of my seat about the plot, I had a lot of fun reading it. I feel like I learned a lot and it just got me started on like this whole mystery mystery craving. The next book that really surprised me was Horses for King Arthur by L.S. Lawrence. I read this for the reading rush and I didn't expect to like get as invested in it as I did. I thought it was such a good book 
it's historical fiction, which I usually don't read, but I just thought it was so powerful and feminist and intriguing because of its ties to English mythology. It's about this girl who decides to help out the rising King Arthur by gathering horses for his army. And it's just so empowering and I had such a good time reading it during the reading rush. I made a full book beam review on it. I'll leave the link in the description below. The last book of 2020 that really surprised me was The Perks of Being a Wallflower. I made a full review on the book and the film. Please check that out if you're interested. And it really surprised me because I didn't expect to like it as much as I did and I didn't expect to relate to the protagonist as much as I did. But Charlie really surprised me in how intelligent and empathetic he was and he's now one of my favourite protagonists. So that was such a pleasant surprise. It's about him going through high school and dealing with all of this trauma that's happened in his past. Very important and intriguing and surprising book of 2020. Okay, you've been waiting for it. So my favourite two books of 2020 were Dare by Natalia Jasta. And honestly, would you expect anything else? So this is the second book in one of my favourite series, Foolish Kingdoms. I have yet to get my hands on the last two books, but when I do, whew, they will shoot to my favourites list as well. I made a full book beam review on Dare. I had such fun talking about it. Without spoiling you too much for the sequel, it's basically about this kingdom which is split into four seasons and this is a romance between a slave from the Summer Kingdom and a prince from the Winter Kingdom. It's so whimsical, the writing is so beautiful, the romance is empowering and important, it's so diverse and just beautiful. I'd really recommend it. So definitely one of my favourites of 2020. My other favourite of 2020 was also a bit surprising and that is A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. My full review of this one is up. I'll leave a link in the description below. But I just really enjoyed this classic tale. I loved Scrooge as a protagonist and I just thought it was so funny and self-aware. In case you don't know, this is a classic about Scrooge who is visited by three Christmas ghosts in order to stop him from dying a greedy man. I just had such a fun time reading it and talking about it and it was just one of my favourite reads of 2020 even though it's like quite a seasonal book. I just really enjoyed this one and it made me laugh a lot. Okay, moving away from books, in terms of TV shows, one of my favourite new TV shows of 2020 was Escape the Night. I binged all four seasons of it and I've been re-watching it, I just loved it so much. I have two videos, one where I review seasons one and two and the next one where I review seasons three and four. I just loved it so much, I loved the YouTuber aspect, the mystery escape room aspect, I just thought it was so amazing. It's hosted by Joey Graceffa and it's like this whole mystery um, where they have to stop evil. I'd really re recommend that one. Another TV show that shot into my favourite of all time list is Soundtrack. I've got a full review of that one coming out soon. I just thought the format of it was so great, how it tied in music so intrinsically and how it weaved together these different characters' lives in such an entertaining way. It was so unique and I loved it a lot. I've also got obsessed with Outlander. At first when I started it I didn't really like it and then I took a break but then I came back to watch the last two seasons and I've j I just got sucked in. I'm re-watching it now. I'll get a review up of that one up for you soon. Got a lot to catch up on but I just love it. It's about this lady who goes back in time 200 years to like 1700 Scotland and falls in love. It's about her trying to survive and also prevent catastrophic things from happening in history. I'm having a lot of fun watching Outlander. I need more! I of course rewatched Jessica Jones this year. My cosplay review of that one is up. I'll leave a link below. I had so much fun reviewing that and watching that again. And even though The Mandalorian came out last year, I've been having a lot of fun catching up with it this year and keeping on top of season two. So amazing. Spin-off of Star Wars. And of course there's Baby Yoda who is everything. Getting into films. So I watched a lot more films than usual this year and I got some new favourites so I rewatched The Book of Life which is always my favourite. It's just great. I talked about that in my movies I've watched recently video. I also watched The Old Guard which I thought was just so interesting. It's about these 
warriors that don't die. Onward was so just great as an animated film. I loved the brotherly relationship and the magic and just all of the messages. A movie that shot into my all-time favourite movies list is Touch of Evil. So a classic old movie, like a noir mystery, but I just thought it was so interesting. It kept me on the edge of my seat and the sound design is incredible. One that's more festive is Holiday. I thought that was a good movie. It made me laugh and it's just like a light-hearted Christmas romance movie. Despite popular opinion, I really enjoyed Birds of Prey. I think it was probably my favourite movie of this year. I just loved Harley Quinn as a protagonist. All of these women around her and just being badasses and fighting the bad guys and it just made me laugh. I thought it was great. Written really well. Kind of tied to that, I watched the original Charlie's Angels. I've seen the reboot but I watched the original one and I actually really liked it. People had told me that it portrayed women negatively and while like there were some things that were like of the time I guess I, I, I thought it was quite empowering and cool like the fight sequences were cool. I thought it was funny. A cool movie about lady spies and the last two movies that I thought were really good this year I watched Bad Neighbours and Bad Neighbours 2. I just thought it was so funny funny. They made me laugh so much. They're about these parents that live next to this fraternity and they just need some quiet and for their neighbours to behave and there's just like a war between the two households and it, everything just gets messed up. It's just so funny. I'd really recommend that one. It's got good actors in it like Zac Efron and Seth Rogen and the second one revolves around a sorority so basically girls move in next door and there's this whole kerfuffle about that. I also watched some music documentaries this year. My my favourite one of which would probably be Miss Americana, which is about Taylor Swift's rise to fame. I just thought that was so interesting to learn more about her as an artist and like her origin story. And of course we got two albums from her, Folklore and Evermore. I still have to catch up on those ones. I feel like it's not the right vibe that I need at the moment. I feel like with Taylor Swift, I always need to like catch up. So like when Reputation came out, I wasn't like angry enough to want to listen to it, but now it's like my jam. I also watched Blackpink's music documentary, Light Up the Sky. I thought that was cool as well and it made me obsessed with them and K-pop. So that's something that happened this year. Leading off of that, my favorite songs of this year were As If It's Your Last, by Blackpink, Ice Cream by Blackpink, Sha La La by Pentagon, also a K-pop group, Monsters which came out recently by All Time Low and Demi Lovato, I liked Into the Unknown which was by Ad Adina Menzel from Frozen 2, an old song Timber, I know it's got bad messages in there but I just think it's catchy and upbeat, I really like Scarborough Fair by Simon and Garfunkel, I got their CD, that's in my birthday haul, link in the description below, I liked Taylor Taylor Swift song The Man. I thought that was really relatable. Born for This by The Score. Bummerland by AJR. When I first heard that one, that is like my jam and every time I listen to it, I'm just like, yes, let's ha let's do this. It's so good. 21 Pilots released a song Level of Concern, which I really liked about quarantine. Very relatable. Sums up this year well. A song from Soundtrack that I got obsessed with was Blood in the Water by Grandson. So amazing. If you want to be angry, listen to that song. I really like the song Mr. Moon and Mathematics. I thought that was really relevant given the Black Lives Matter movement. I got into the Beatles a little bit and I really liked the song Happiness is a Warm Gun. Really liked the song Cannonball and Last Night by Good Charlotte became my jam for a little bit. Moving into anime. So I watched a few anime this year. Of course my all-time favourite is Noragami and I rewatched that. A binge meme coming out for that soon, I promise. I also rewatched Puella Majimadoka Magica and got obsessed with that magical girl vibes which led into the Sailor Moon read. But my favourite anime of 2020 was Haikyuu. So it's about this boy who's obsessed with volleyball and he gets into this team at school and it's just about them and their lives 
of volleyball. It might not sound the best, especially if you're not a sports person, but watching it, it was just so entrancing and I got obsessed and I, even though I didn't like volleyball, now I'm interested in it and it made me excited to watch it and it was just so fun and action-packed, so I'd really recommend that if, you, if you're interested. I think there's three or four seasons that I watched so far. I got a new favourite board game this year, which was Poetry for the Anderthals. This is also in my birthday haul. It's just such a fun game where you have to speak in one syllable words so that people can guess what you're saying, or you get hit with a no stick. Very fun game. I also got into Warhammer, so there's like this kind of war board game with figurines, so I've gotten into playing that and painting the figurines and I also got this short story collection which I've yet to read but that's just something that happened this year. In terms of games they've mainly been revolving around the Switch so I completed Pokemon Shield which was really fun and nostalgic. I've been really enjoying Mario Party with friends and during quarantine my partner and I played Animal Crossing a lot. It was just peaceful even though I don't really like Animal Crossing. It was just nice at the time. I've been playing Indiana Jones Lego on PS3. The graphics aren't the best but it's still quite funny. And lastly I got the app Idle Monsters on my phone and I'm obsessed with that. It's just a tower defense game but I think it's cool. Those were all my favorites of 2020 what a year it has been. I hope you've found some joy this year or you've read or watched something that you just really loved. I'm Jade the Beamer. I make videos on books, TV shows and movies, basically anything pop culture with some other stuff thrown in as well. I made a video about lessons I've learned turning 21. Here are all of my socials. I'm on Instagram, Twitter and Goodreads. I'll leave a link to everything in the description below. If you enjoyed this video feel free to like and subscribe to my channel so you don't don't miss out on any pop culture goodness. And let me know down in the comments below what are some of your favourites of 2020? Do any of mine appear in your list as well? I'd love to know. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time in 2021. Let's have a good year. Let's read all the books, watch all the stuff, and overall just live the best lives that we can, okay? We can do this. Take care and I'll catch you next time. See you next year. Goodbye!